And with the two-day extension of the brief Israel-Hamas truce nearing an end, efforts are ongoing to further continue the deal. Well, the leaders of the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, or the CIA, and also Israel's Mossad met Qatar's Prime Minister in Doha on Tuesday. The aim was to build on the two-day extension of the truce. The officials have reportedly discussed possible parameters of a new phase of the truce deal. This includes the possibility of Hamas releasing hostages who are men or military personnel, not just women and children. Officials consider the need to reach a ceasefire lasting more than a handful of days. However, the outcomes of the talks are yet unclear as of now. Meanwhile, calls are growing to further extend the deal. Palestinian envoy during a debate on West Asia at the United Nations General Assembly said that the truce must turn into a permanent ceasefire. Not only this, discussions are also being held in the United Nations Security Council on Wednesday. The session is going to be chaired by Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi. The Assembly's resolution had foreseen only a truce could allow sincere efforts to begin to address the humanitarian catastrophe being inflicted by Israel, the occupying power in Gaza. Only a truce could lead to the release of people held in captivity and avoid further regional escalation. This truce must turn into a permanent ceasefire. The massacres of Palestinian children, women, and men cannot resume, should not resume. You should not allow it to resume. The human conscience cannot bear it. On the other hand, hopes for an extension are also among the leaders of Lebanon-based militant group Hezbollah. Israel and Iran-backed group, they have been engaging in cross-border hostilities since the war began, opening a new front in the ongoing war. Inshallah, yani, yastamir waqfit la, tastamir al-hidni, u b'nuqdar innu nkammil bi kul al-ihsaat wa annusil al-haq ila ashabi. While talks are on ongoing for further extension, Israeli Minister Ben Giver indirectly warned Prime Minister Netanyahu against stopping the war in Gaza. In a post to next, the far-right Israeli Minister of National Security said that stopping the war means a dissolution of the coalition headed by Netanyahu. Not only this, in yet another tweet, he called on Netanyahu to allow Israeli soldiers to return to fighting in Gaza in order to, I'm quoting here, crush Hamas. Meanwhile, new satellite visuals from Gaza show aid evacuations and destruction amid the ongoing truce. The images show trucks crossing into Gaza from Egypt. Not only that, but also queues for gas, people walking down road, as well as destroyed hospitals. The United States has sent the first of the three military planes to Egypt to bring important humanitarian aid to Gaza during the ongoing truce. The relief flights carrying food, medical supplies and winter gear are the first by the U.S. military since the war began. The first flight contains 24.5 metric tons of medical supplies and ready-to-eat food, as for the officials. U.S. says that since the truce began in Gaza, attacks on its troops have also halted in Iraq and Syria. The U.S. bases were experiencing near-daily attacks since the war broke out. On the other hand, concerns have been raised by G7 foreign ministers over Houthi rebels. They have called for the group to cease threats to international shipping and also to release a vessel they seized earlier this month. On November 19th, Houthis seized Israeli-linked cargo vessel and its 25 international crew at the entrance to the Red Sea. And for more on this, our correspondent Susan Tehrani has sent us this report on Washington's conundrum surrounding financial aid to Israel. Take a listen. White House officials say that tomorrow is another day, hoping that those two women held in Hamas captivity will be released. However, they say nothing is certain. Meanwhile, 
some within the president's own party on Capitol Hill, including independent senator from Vermont. Bernie Sanders want to see strings attached to aid going to Israel. And with the Republicans wanting to attach border security to Ukraine aid, well, aid to both Israel and Ukraine may soon run dry. Ultimately, if this kind of bill ends up on President Biden's desk, well, it's not going to be any easy feat for him to sign. So we'll have to wait and see how that develops. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, who's in Europe meeting with NATO allies, is due to be in Israel by the end of the week to follow up on what CIA Director Bill Burns is doing in Doha, which is hoping to expand this truce between Israel and Hamas on the one hand and negotiate the release of more hostages, notably Americans.